Ich würde gern direkt überleiten auf einen anderen Kontinent, nämlich nach Indien, um dort die Perspektiven zu hören, auch ein wenig aus einer anderen Generation. Virginia Saldana ist im Jahr 1947 geboren, hat drei Kinder und ist verwitwet. Ein Teil ihrer Arbeit widmet sie sich genau dem Thema, aber einen zweiten Teil ist genau die Frage, welche Rolle kann Frau in der Gesellschaft und in der Kirche in Indien einnehmen. Sie war ehemalige Geschäftsführerin des Frauenreferats der Erzdiözese Bombay und Mitglied des Vorstands von Pax Christi International. Sie hat als Geschäftsführerin die Frauenkommission der Indischen Katholischen Bischofskonferenz geleitet und ist Mitglied der Ecclesia of Women in Asia. Gemeinde, Katechese, Befreiungs- und Feministische Theologie sind ihre Schwerpunkte. Liebe Frau Saldana, herzlich willkommen in Leipzig. Thank you, Dr. Anil. Uh, it's my pleasure to talk to you today about India. And uh, since I worked for the Federation of Asian Bishops Conferences also in the Office of Laity and in charge of the Office of Women, I would like to also bring in uh, Asia, because I know Asia. I worked for women in all the uh, member countries of the FABC in Asia. From what was said yesterday and today, we know that women all over the world are asking that the gender discrimination in the leadership of the Catholic Church be recognized and corrected. There are groups who are demanding admission of women to the current form of priesthood. Some are asking at least for the diaconate to be opened up for women. While there are some who want the current form of priesthood to change and the common priesthood of all the baptized to be fostered. Three different. However, I have to point out that the majority of women are still ignorant. I'm talking about India, Asia, still ignorant of their role and dignity in the church and still believe that the clergy are in the place of God. As pointed out yesterday, theological education is very important for women to understand their position in the church. But theological education for women is not easy to access in developing countries. You just have theolo theologates for seminarians. You don't have university degrees in theology. So unless women are admitted into these theologates in the seminaries, they have no access to theology. The Indian Women Theologians Forum, which I had uh, started when I was in the CBCI Women's Commission, discuss this topic of priesthood. And this is what we had to say. The common priesthood of women, this was discussed in 2015. We decided that women should not enter the current form of priesthood because new wine requires new wineskins. New visions and liberative insights cannot be contained in old structures. We had a three-day deliberation on this, and this was our conclusion. Women theologians feel that the existing hierarchical structures of the church, based on the ministerial priesthood, are a significant deviation from what Jesus envisioned for his community of equal discipleship. We feel the need to explore further and find new ways of growing as a prophetic and witnessing community according to the vision of Jesus. In the early church, women shared in decision-making and had leadership and liturgical roles in the community. We know about this from the Acts and from the letter to the Romans. In 1991, the Asian bishops had articulated their vision for the church in Asia and described it as a communion of communities where laity, religious, clergy, 
recognize and accept each other as brothers and sisters. This was at the FABC assembly number five. The, in a participatory and co-responsible church. This led to the creation of the small Christian communities similar to what they had in Latin America. However, the momentum towards that vision has been lost to the power of clericalism. We, over a period of about uh, 10 years, we kept assessing the progress towards this vision. And every time the reports kept coming back to say, we tried to do this, but the parish priest would not allow us. Every report came from the different countries. We heard this, the parish priest would not allow us. So it became subject to the parish priest decision. And therefore we saw the power of clericalism. The church in Asia went backward to being a patriarchal and hierarchical institution. The current form of priesthood that has bred clericalism and the structure of the church modeled on empire, because it started in Europe, are the best, biggest challenges to women's leadership in the church because they are rooted in patriarchy and hierarchy. Clericalism can be defined as an addiction to power. Priests want to be in charge and control. They continue to exercise a dominating top-down relationship and leadership to their people, not a collaborative style of leadership. Priests see women as mere helpers, not as equal disciples. Yesterday, many spoke about women participating in many pastoral responsibilities, and even this morning, all, we all know that women are the main people in the church, at all church services, as well as participating in all pastoral responsibilities. They are catechists as well, majority. But these responsibilities require just following what the priest tells them to do. Women do not make any autonomous decisions. Women leaders in the small Christian communities did a very good job in building community. Women are the majority of the leaders in the SSCs. The structure still stands, okay? The structures of the SCC still stands, but they're being used differently. Women's leadership was appreciated, but today these women leaders are just the extended arm of the parish priest in the communities, okay? They carry the message of the parish priest to the communities. That's all they do. Now today we have WhatsApp group, so it's easier. She is only the messenger of the parish priest. Women are not encouraged to use their gifts and talents to minister to communities. Training of leaders in the new way of being church is absolutely necessary, but community leaders today receive very little training. They do not understand the theology of the new way of being church. Leaders are randomly chosen according to the comfort level of the parish priest. Trained leaders are a challenge to the parish priest. Priests do not like to be questioned. They want absolute obedience. The majority of baptized are not aware of their baptismal responsibility to be priest, prophet, and leader. They are content with ritualistic practices where the priest is the center. With the lockdown, you know, COVID-19, internet mass and all kinds of prayers and rituals will became available online for public consumption. So a ritualistic church was strongly entrenched. You see, people hear mass and all day they are surfing the internet for more and more services and, you know, rituals and rosary and everything. Now everything is on the internet. So you see how clericalism and the priest-centered church is being emphasized. 
Abuse of power by lead clergy is seen in their relationship to religious sisters. There have been instances of some courageous women religious who resisted this abuse. But the bishops and priests have the majority of the people behind to support them. Not even their congregational leadership is supporting religious women who are abused by priests. So we in India have formed a group, and we call ourselves Sisters in Solidarity, to support these women. And even the uh, women, Indian Women Theologians Forum supports anybody, any sisters, who find themselves in a situation of abuse. There are some sisters that have left the forum because we take up this. You see? So not every theologian in India is a member of the Indian Women Theologians Forum because we are a very, very progressive group. The majority remain uh, very conservative. Sex abuse of women and children is wrapped in silence. People are afraid to question the clergy about abuse. They, those who have dared to speak up are silenced. Silenced is coerced and bought. A mother of a child victim of abuse whose case was taken to court was badly maligned and marginalized in her parish community, so much so that she had to move to a different parish. And she was a poor woman. She had to move to a different parish. She could not survive in her parish. Now, would Jesus do something like this? Are these men representing Jesus? That's what I ask. Are these priests representing Jesus? They are not. They are not representing Jesus. In Asia, culture is rooted in patriarchy. Violence to women is not addressed or even spoken about in the church today. Uh, let me tell you that I was the first one to be in charge of the women's uh, desk or commission in my diocese at the CBCI level, at the FABC level. Today, all those have been, uh, you know, either completely muted or shut down. Yes. So uh, the work for women, therefore, violence to women is just not addressed. The Bishops' Conference of India brought out a gender policy with much fanfare in 2010, but it remains a dead document. We also push the bishops to bring out a policy to address abuse. They brought it out in 2015, but have never touched it, never publicized it. It remains a private document, yes. Women religious go to remote villages in India, and they build communities. But when they build a sizable community, a priest is sent there, and the women religious is moved out. You see, so the women do the groundwork, the priests come and take the leadership. So this is the reality of the church. So equality for women in the church, uh, sadly, is not a very big question because of lack of awareness. Except for a minority of feminists, most women only participate by doing what the priest tells them to do. They do not make decisions with regard to their ministry. Some women theologians are given positions as teachers and theologates, as uh, Serena said, if they follow the magisterium. They are also invited to speak on various official fora in the church, but definitely not feminists. If you, def if you uh, qualify yourself as a feminist theologian, you are out. They are able to achieve some small degree of awareness, but not enough to make changes in clerical attitudes towards women. If women theologians speak strongly about women's ordination, they risk losing recognition by the bishops. It is mainly the women theologians who keep asking the question about women's role and responsibility in the leadership in the church. The Indian Women Theologians Forum is not officially recognized by the hierarchy. We also have Ecclesia of Women in Asia, which is a forum for Asian women theologians. And theologians who are member of, members of that forum are not invited to bishops. 
meetings or to speak to any official church gathering. They are marginalized. Women's studies and feminist theology is not taught in the theologates and seminaries in India. Feminist theology is not even recognized as a subject. Women who please bishops are given responsibilities and roles in the church, but they do not achieve any progress on women's concerns because they have to do and say only what the bishops want them to do and say. Some women who have a master's or PhD degree in theology are teachers. Some work in the courier in subordinate positions, but not with, uh, P, uh, not with uh, theological degrees. Many women are catechists in parishes. All those who work in the church of in, in India do an honorary service. It is never paid. Women do not take up the study of theology because they cannot get a paid job in the church for their years of study. Mainly sisters study theology for their ministry. Very few lay women take up the study of theology for the sake of broadening their own understanding of the faith. Women who have studied theology tend to question the hierarchy, which make the hierarchy very uncomfortable. Definitely, there, there are limits to what women can do and achieve in the church. Women have no authority, no autonomy or power in the church, so they cannot achieve much. My own experience of working in the Bishop's Conference of India and Asia is an example of this. I wanted to organize a meeting of women theologians in Asia to dialogue with the bishops on issues that bishops found contentious with women. They would always badmouth women theolog theologians. So I said, come on, let us have a dialogue. You know, you bishops talk to the women theologians. Oh my gosh, they thought I was asking them to go to hell. <laughs> really? Uh, they said definitely no. But I did go ahead and organize a meeting where I invited women theologians and ask them to share with the bishops their God experience in life and how feminist theology is seen as vital for changing attitudes and promoting the inclusion of women in decision making and their full partnership in the mission of the church. But only 10 bishops came to the meeting instead of 30 whom we wanted. However, in conclusion, I must say that with the coming of Zoom, Women have been provided with a space where they can have their own meetings, liturgies, discussions, and prayer sessions. And uh, I'm the chairperson of CWC also, CVC, and uh, we started in 21 during the COVID pandemic, and right through we had a lot of liturgies and uh, global liturgies that were greatly appreciated from uh, getting women from different parts of the world to participate. So that created a lot of, uh, you know, sort of uh, awareness. And many women, got, we got feedback to say that they found these liturgies very energizing, you know, and experiential. We also organized many listening sessions during, uh, uh, the, you know, sort of the process of the synod. And uh, our, our group uh, of uh, executive that is in uh, Europe, they went to Rome and gave the report to uh, Sister Natalie. So during the lockdown, women around the world got creative and began conducting liturgies online. Many found these liturgies very spiritual and energizing. It also helped women to network and come together as the Catholic Women's Council. Thank you. <laughs>